FANG stands for Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google, five of the largest tech stocks in the world with a combined market cap larger than most countries' gross domestic product. It has driven much of the rise of the U.S. stock market indices and has performed extremely well over the past two decades. Tech is known for trading at outrageous valuations, so the question is, are these tech stocks currently at values worth buying? In this video, we will explore the valuation of the FANG stocks. You will learn more about valuing growth stocks yourself, and this may help you decide whether now or the near future is a good time for you to invest in these companies. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. The growth of the FANG stocks has been massive, and I want to put it into perspective for you. This graphic compares the market capitalization of the FANG stocks and a couple other large US companies with the gross domestic product of countries or parts of the world. The GDP is a measure of all the total market value of all the finished goods and services produced within a country's borders over a year. So we are comparing countries with companies. Microsoft's market cap is bigger than eight Eastern EU countries combined. Apple is bigger than half of Russia. Bank of America is bigger than five stands as they refer to them here combined. These would be countries like Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan. Alphabet or Google is bigger than 38 combined African countries. Facebook is bigger than Argentina. Amazon is bigger than nine South American countries combined. Visa is larger than nine Central American countries combined. And Netflix is bigger than five Balkan countries combined. The first metric evaluation most people think of is the price to earnings ratio. I'm showing you the price to earnings ratio of all five FANG stocks here on a chart I made on Finbox. I like to compare a company's valuation metrics to its own history as well as its rivals. All the FANG stocks have PE ratios above the S&P 500 average. Overall, Amazon and Netflix's PE ratios have come down significantly, but they remain high. Looking at just the past year, we see the PE for Facebook and Google have been constant while Apple has increased. Netflix has declined significantly and Amazon has gone up by a large margin. Let's take a moment to compare each of these stocks with the industry. On this table, I am showing you valuation metrics for each company and its percentile when compared to its own industry. We have Google first, and then Apple, Netflix, Facebook, and Amazon. Compared to the industry, Google is at the 54th percentile and Facebook is at the 58th percentile, both of which are fairly reasonable. Apple is higher at the 74th percentile, Netflix is at the 82nd percentile, and Amazon is at the 96th percentile. Based on PE, Google and Facebook look most favorable. Although some of the FANG has PE ratios consistent with their industry, none of them are undervalued in terms of their industry or the S&P 500 in general. We next look at the PEG ratio. PEG stands for Price to Earnings to Growth. This is a forward-looking PE ratio which considers earnings growth for the next five years based on analyst estimates. I ideally want to see a PEG of 1 or below. Instead, we find that Facebook is at the lowest at 1.93, which is at the 59th percentile. Netflix and Apple are both over a 2 and at the 67th and 86th percentile respectively. Amazon is even higher at a 3.47, which is at the 82nd percentile, and Google is the highest at a 6 and the 89th percentile. Similar to the PE ratio, none of them look undervalued and many look overvalued. As you will see later, however, depending on the company, earnings are not always a useful method of valuation. This video is also less useful if people don't see it, so please like the video to get it out to more people who are interested. Let's take a look at price to sales. Here we see Amazon in green has been fairly stable across time, Apple in purple has been stable but increased over the past year, and Google, though higher than Apple and Amazon, has been stable. Netflix has been higher than these three since 2017 and is quite high at a price to sales of 8.8. .8. Facebook has historically been by far the highest in terms of price to sales and remains that way, though less than usual. This decrease in price to sales is trending in the right direction, but it remains well above its contemporaries. When we look back at percentiles for the industries for price to sales, Google and Amazon are fairly high at the 79th and 78th percentiles respectively. Facebook and Netflix are still higher at the 85th percentiles each, and Apple, despite having a lower price to sales ratio compared to most of the FANG, is at the 95th percentile. If you're wondering how Apple could be at the highest percentile with a lower price to sales ratio, it is because it is not in the same industry as the others and is thus being compared to other companies for the percentile. Although I generally look at price to book when valuing companies, I find it less helpful to do so for some of these tech companies which rely less on assets. To summarize briefly, however, all the FANG stocks have price to book ratios far higher than the S&P 500 average and well above what you see in most other sectors. Compared to their own industries, they are high. With the exception of Apple's recent increase, the FANG stocks have been fairly consistent in this valuation over the past five years. I don't believe price to book tells us much about the valuation of these companies, however. We get a similar result when looking at price to cash flow over the past 12 months. All five are well above S&P 500 averages and industry averages. 
These numbers of 21, almost 21, 80, 25, and 37 are well above where I look to buy. The percentiles for the industry range from the 67th percentile to the 87th percentile. So is that the end of the story? They are all fairly to extremely overvalued and there is no benefit to buying? Not at all. We need to look at the data on fast graphs for another perspective. Let's start by looking at Amazon. I told you before that earnings is not always a good metric for valuing companies. Amazon is a great example. If you look at the graph, the dark green you can barely see down at the bottom is the earnings. If you look at the black line, that is the price. There is no connection between earnings and price. If you only looked at the price to earnings, you would have never bought Amazon and missed one of the biggest returns of over 24,000% over the past 20 years. Let me say that again, 24,000%. The reason is that earnings can be misleading. Amazon has heavily reinvested in the company and made massive acquisitions. This has caused earnings to look low. Thus, while the company has rapidly expanded and is highly profitable, the low earnings numbers make the price to earnings ratio appear outrageously high. What do we need to do? If the price doesn't track earnings, we need to identify what the price does track. The answer is price to EBITDA. EBITDA stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. When you look at the chart showing the price to EBITDA over the last 15 years, you will see that the price tracks EBITDA very well. An investor looking at this graph could have foreseen the huge gains Amazon has afforded. Look at the bottom. Analysts are projecting 47, 37, and 24% gains in EBITDA over the next several years. If price to EBITDA continues as it has, we are looking at a ridiculously high 40% annual return during that time. The closing price at the end of 2022 would be over $5,900 per share. Based on growth, Fast Graphs has set the orange line to show where fair value is. Based on this, Amazon is not overvalued at all. Price to operating cash flow shows similar results and it is this cash flow that I am more interested in than earnings. Let's do the same thing with earnings for Google or Alphabet. When we compare the price as the black line to the dark green earnings, we see again that they don't track well and Google always looks ridiculously overvalued. Given the tracking does not match well, is there a better method of valuation? Well, let's look at price to EBITDA again. Just like Amazon, we see Google's price tracks EBITDA extremely well and it is currently fairly valued. During the period shown on the graph, EBITDA grew at around 18.5% per year. What did the share price grow at? A very similar 20%. Based on analyst expectations of EBITDA growth of 22, 24, and 17% for the coming years, we could expect to see Google return 20% per year, growing the shares to almost $2,300 per share by the end of 2022. Let's look at Apple next. As you can see, the price did track earnings quite well up until 2019. For the past year and a half, the share price has skyrocketed and looks very overvalued. This was reflected in the price to sales and price to book charts I showed you earlier in this video. Unlike Amazon and Google, you can look at Apple with any metric you like. Price to book, price to sales, the peg ratio, price to EBITDA, price to free cash flow, price to operating cash flow, price to EBIT, it doesn't really matter. It comes out as extremely overvalued no matter how you measure it. All charts and graphs will come out looking similar to this one. Fast Graphs has a forecasting calculator. If we look at the forecasting calculator, it again demonstrates the share price well above the orange fair value line. If the price returns to fair value by September of 2023, we will see a loss of over 4% annually. This does not demonstrate a margin of safety and I can't buy a company that appears so overvalued at this time. Looking at Facebook, we see Facebook's price also tracks the earnings well and has generally followed it with over 33% annual earnings growth and share price appreciation of 29.4% annually. Although this chart looks Facebook look like it is fairly valued, that is misleading. This fair value line is being calculated based on its historical 33% annual growth. However, if you look ahead, analysts are expecting 13, 35, and 22% growth. In other words, this very fast growing company is slowing down. We need to adjust the prediction model. When we look at the fast graph forecasting calculator based on estimates, we see it is overvalued based on the 21.76% annual estimated returns. By the end of 2022, we might only expect returns around 4.5%. Now bear in mind, this is if the price returns to fair value, which Fastgraph sees as being based on a PE equal to the growth rate. If Facebook maintains its current high price to earnings ratio despite the growth slowdown, we will see something more like this. If the PE remains at a 33, we would see almost 23% in annual returns. My guess is Facebook's PE will drop as growth slows and investors see less future growth prospects. That being said, I also doubt it will return to fair value for many years and will continue to trade at a premium unless something disrupts the price. I expect returns to be somewhere between that low 4.5% and the high 23% per year over the next several years. Last, we have Netflix. 
This is a more complex company to value, in part because it is challenging to predict where it will go in terms of competition in the streaming world. However, when you look at the earnings, free cash flow, operating cash flow, and even price to EBITDA charts here, you can clearly see its price has either not tracked these metrics meaningfully and or is way overvalued. The complicating factor for Netflix is its free cash flow and operating cash flow are in fact negative. Now, if we look at price to EBIT, we will see that there is some connection to share price and it even appears to be around fair value. Looking at the Fastgrass forecasting calculator, it expects 52% annual returns. That seems extremely high, and this is only when we look at price to EBIT as every other metric looks very poor for Netflix. For me personally, I can invest in a company with negative free cash flow and negative operating cash flow and a sky high price to earnings ratio. For those who do invest in Netflix, it'll be primarily based on a belief in where the company is headed. Although I have money invested in all five of these fan companies, my buy-in price is far more favorable than any of their current prices. Of the five, the only two I see as a good price I intend to buy at now is Amazon and Google. What are your thoughts? Do you think the FANG stocks are under, fair, or overvalued? Which have you been buying? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell because I'm creating new content for you every week. As always, good luck with your investing.